Hello and welcome to this section of the tutor. In this section we're going to in general deal with powers and roots. Uh, so before we get into the more complicated stuff we'll just talk about squares and square roots because that's what you're normally going to be dealing with. The square button is right here as a second function on your calculator and the square root button is located right here. So it operates pretty much as you might expect it to. If we're uh, dealing with uh, 9 and we're taking a square root, put 9 on the stack, hit the square root button, and it'll return 3. Uh, if you put 64 and you don't put it on the stack, you just hit the square root button, uh, then it'll return 8. All right. So if you, if you happen to put a negative number on the stack for some reason, right, and hit the square root button, uh, it'll return 3 times the square root of negative 1, right, which is something that should be pretty familiar to you because that's 3i. So we haven't gotten into complex or imaginary numbers yet, but that's basically uh, what it is here. And let me go ahead and undo that and show you that real quick. Let's go ahead and hit the undo button. So if you have uh, 3 times the square root of negative 1, if you, if you actually hit the uh, convert to number button down here, then what you'll see is 0, 3 in parentheses. Now a lot of students get confused because this looks like a, a coordinate point, 0, 3 in the xy plane. What the, this is the calculator's notation of telling you what a complex number is. This is 0 plus 3i is what this is. So that's why when we took the square root of negative 9 just a minute ago, we got effectively when you evaluate it all you get 0 plus 3i because the answer is 3i. Let me show you that one more time. If you take um, 100 and you make it negative and push it on the stack and take the square root of it, it's going to tell you it's 10 times the square root of negative 1. Right? Now if you go and evaluate that or convert it to number, uh, then it will go ahead and, and, and change it over into a complex number for us and what it will tell you is 0 plus 10i. This is what this is. Or in other words, just 10i. Square root of negative 100 is 10i. So just so you know, we haven't really gotten into complex imaginary numbers yet too much in this calculator, but I'm kind of um, getting your feet wet a little bit. If you see this parentheses with a number comma number, this means complex number basically. If you ever get something uh, like that, that that comes out of a function. So the square button is the second function that behaves basically the same way. If you put 7 in here and then hit second left function up here to x squared, 7 times 7 is 49. And you can do it with negative numbers as well, negative 2, uh, 9 times negative 2 will give you a positive 4. So these are very common functions right here that we're going to use all the time in the calculator. Now, what if you would like to raise a number to a power that was not uh, power of 2. So this is x squared, very common, so we use it all the time, but what if you wanted to raise something to the third power, to the fifth power, to the seventeenth power, uh, or even to the negative power? You would use this button right here, y to the x, right? So the way you, the way you need to think about this function is you, 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 you need to supply the calculator with two numbers in order to calculate this. You need to tell it the base, which is the, the y number, and you need to tell it the exponent, which is the x number. So the way you put this in here is you put the base number first, so this is 2 on the stack, put 3 on the stack as the exponent. And when we press this number, it's, this button, it's going to take the last two guys on the stack and it's going to assume the top number is the base, 2 raised to the power of 3. It takes a little bit of practice to kind of remember how it works, but once you get the hang of it, it's very, very simple. 2 raised to the power of 3, if we hit this button, gives us 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Now, I will say that these functions do work in algebraic mode as well. So if you get confused, I mean, I like RPN mode. Everybody that I know uses these guys in RPN mode. I encourage you to use RPN mode. But if you really just want to do a quick calculation in algebra mode, just hit this guy. Then go ahead and hit this button here and see what happens. It puts a little caret symbol up there. So that's something that a lot of people might be a little more familiar with. So you might be able to do 2 raised to the power of 3. And this is a little bit more readable, right, for a lot of people who aren't familiar with RPN mode. So you go ahead and hit enter and it'll write it in the proper way and then you can evaluate that and it'll give you 8. Another way to do it, if you didn't want to do this guy on the stack, if you got really confused, you know, which way to put these guys on the stack, is you could go into the equation writer which is, you know, I think one of the best features of this calculator. And you could do, um, let's see, um, 127, let's make it, uh, yeah, let's make it 145 or whatever, now raised to the power of 4, right? And then we can hit enter, it'll put it on the stack, and then we can hit eval, and it'll go ahead and give us a value back for that. 
So I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I operate this calculator in RPN mode, but if you get stuck and if you're not sure, you can always do a quick algebraic calculation with these buttons that are a little bit more familiar to most people. But in general, you push the base onto the stack, you push the exponent onto the stack, so it's 7 raised to the power of 3 when I press this button is 343. So the same sort of logic is going to apply to the final function I want to talk about in this section, and that is the taking the the nth root of a number. In other words, we, we've talked about square roots. Square roots are very common, right? Uh, but what if you want to take a third root, or a fourth root, or a fifth root? Well, there's a dedicated button for that second function up here. And again, you have to supply two numbers to the calculator. You have to give it the base number of what you're actually taking the root of. That goes under the radical. And you're also telling it what, what root you'd like to take, fourth root, fifth root, or whatever. So the way to do that in RPN mode uh, we could do 27 and push that onto the stack and then we can put 3 onto the stack and once we hit this button it's going to take the third root of 27 right it's going to take the third root of 27 uh, because the first number that you put on the stack is going to be sort of the number that you're operating on that's the way to really think about this the second number that you're putting on the stack is sort of like additional information needed to pull it off so this is like the number we're operating on under the radical. The other number is the number outside that we need to complete the operation. So we'll go ahead and hit orange button and do this guy and we'll get three. The third, the, the third root of 27 is three because three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. So three times three times three is 27. Obviously it works with square roots as well. If we do, you know, 100, push it on the stack and then we put two on the stack. Then if we press this button here, it's going to be the square root of 100 because the 100 is the base number under the radical, 2 is what's on the outside, and there we go, you get 10. So these two guys, the taking the uh, nth power of something and taking the nth root of something, uh, they basically operate the same way. In RPN mode, the first number you put on the stack is the base number that you're operating on. The second number you put on the stack is sort of the other number needed to pull off the transaction. And if you get stuck, uh, not really sure which way to do it in RPN mode, you can always do this in algebraic mode uh, as well, just like we did before. The easiest way you can do that is to go into the equation writer, let's say. And, uh, you know, let's say you were going to, to do the, uh, the cubed root of something. So let's do 3, and let's do this guy. So we'll make it a cubed root of 27, and it looks exactly like we put. So when we're operating you know, in out sort of pseudo algebraic mode like that, the first number we type in is going to be the, the number on the outside, the x, because it comes first. The guy under the radical, we just type it in exactly as it would appear in a textbook. It pushes it onto the stack. We hit evaluate and we'll get three. Algebraic mode in the equation writer is much, much easier, but you can do this on the stack as well. If you hit this guy, you're in temporary algebraic mode. Um, and then what you can do is hit this function here, nth root or x root, of a number and the first number that you type in is going to be the uh, the uh, what root you're taking like the nth root so this is a third root of 27 so we'll go ahead and hit enter and it's going to write it just like that third root of 27 we can evaluate that so my advice is to get comfortable with RPN mode so the, the number you push on first is the number you're operating on the secondary number is the number that's needed to complete the transaction if you get stuck with it uh, then you know go ahead and, and jump, jump into the equation writer because what you type into the equation writer is going to look like what you're trying to type in from your book or from your homework and then there really be no ambiguity at all so in the beginning sometimes it's easier to go ahead and do it that way so we've taken a tour of some important features of the calculator the square button the square root button the uh, nth power button and the nth root button and we'll continue on working our way through some of these common uh, features and functions and buttons on the calculator here in the next few sections